Hi everybody, it's Thursday again and it's Think Differently Thursday. Uh, lovely that you've joined us. Um, my guest today is Heather. Hi Heather. Hi Helen, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Enjoying uh, the day off today, which is always nice. Lovely. How many days do you work? <laughs> um, I do three days a week, so I do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So That's right, so we only cross on the... Wednesday, Thursday, don't we? Yes. So yes. we should explain that. Uh, yes. I know Heather um, from my other work life. So we both work at St Matthew's School, um, yeah. which is a great place to work, isn't it, Heather? It is. It's fantastic. It's just a great atmosphere. I think as soon as you go into school, you can tell there's just something a little bit different and everyone seems to get on and the children are really lovely and it's just a pleasure to work there. I know. We sound like we're not being authentic, but it genuinely I know. It is. It genuinely so... is. Yeah, it's a lovely um, place. And in fact, I think we're up to, um, I think we're up to four people now that uh, members of staff that have left and come yeah. back again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I'm lovely it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how long have you been there now? Um, I think it's nine, ten years. So yeah, I think it's yeah. my tenth year. Yeah. I don't know where that's gone. The I would Zoom never up. have guessed that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, and we don't, we've never actually worked together I don't think we might have done the odd thing and I know I've kind of encouraged you to come on some trips with me yeah. in the past but South we haven't Wold worked in, yeah South Wales <laughs> um, we haven't worked in the classroom together I don't think have we no I don't think we have no I think you've always been in key stage one and I've yes. always been in key stage two so yes. I've never crossed no what year are you working in this year uh, year six again so yeah so it's good it keeps me busy and yeah the year group so far seem really lovely I've never worked with them before so I don't know oh, them but, yeah. but the children seem really nice so yeah. settling in well I think so I might come good. across you once when I do um subject release time I guess you know once a term we might work together <laughs> yes definitely yeah you're up and you're up the top corridor yeah last Wednesday week. morning yeah yeah I'm, yeah I'm working my way up there I'll come and join you soon <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a little boy and he's at school how yes. has he coped because I know like from the perspective of our children at school the return to school which has been it's been weird for them how's your little boy how's Jonah coped with going back he's actually done really really well he loves it he loves school um and he settled in so well and we're really proud of him actually even with the new changes he's not he's not doesn't seem phased by it at all he's just wow gone in it's almost as if okay it's part of my daily routine this is what I've got to do and just gets on with it but I think that's so true of kids isn't it kids are so yeah. versatile and adaptable I think sometimes as adults we think change is going to be massive and actually I think yeah. they're so they're so here and now aren't they that if this is what you're presenting to me today this is what yeah. I do quite often yeah how but was yeah, um, how was homeschooling actually great we loved it <laughs> i know yeah, it was really really good i know i know i think some people, how old is he how old's jonah um he's five now so okay. he's just yeah just gone into year one but he's oh, so he's in reception right. at the time of of lockdown i honestly but, think that's the hardest of the year groups i've seen in school i think for year one it's the hardest because they missed that yeah. half of reception which was a bit yeah. like getting to use to school but lots yeah. of kind of learning through play and suddenly year one and not only yeah. year one but sitting rows and yeah, two, oh, yeah you've got I think a face of front hard. yeah so he's yeah. done really well if he's yeah okay. he's done really well yeah and he did go back for a few weeks before the summer because we thought okay. it was it was good for him just to um be aware of some of those changes and almost to to like see them before he goes back yeah um, yeah also almost to say goodbye to reception because I know they That's didn't have right. that closure yeah. yeah and also one of their teachers because they had um two teachers that job shared in reception okay. um, and one of them's gone up with them to year one and does them full time so That's that transition nice. has made it a whole lot easier for uh, for yeah. them I think yes yeah. there's loads of things in there that have made that easier then oh yeah, so good good and the school were amazing in terms of home homeschooling they you know the stuff they sent out in it was all good fun interactive things and and he loved it and it was and like I said it's wow. nice to have Rob at home because he's away a lot so it's nice that we just had that time together you've and... had this whole like family time together yeah it's been unexpected yeah. that's yeah really it's really nice. good for us to, to have that time fabulous yeah. I'm really pleased <laughs> um, and Heather I know that you're a Christian and so like me you will love the fact that we work in a church school and um that Christianity is promoted in the place that we work, which is lovely. Um, yeah. 
so has faith christianity has that been part of your life growing up is that something that you've always been around or something newer to you yeah definitely no it's always been a part of our of our lives uh, quite an important part um we've always gone to church mum and dad uh, went to a baptist church when we were younger so we obviously went along with them and were part of that until i was about six um and then they started going to the salvation army okay um, yeah so we went along to the salvation army with them and then mum and dad sort of felt called to become ministers so okay. they then became ministers of the salvation army um yeah so faith has always been a, a massive part of our lives and right. you know always kind of been at the center really and sort of we've we've moved around around a lot with them because as ministers in the salvation army you don't really spend a long period of time anywhere so okay. you kind of move around so so, so yes what is, what is ministers is that the people that would then lead the church yeah so it's yeah oh. so like yeah the minister oh. um the vicar so to speak but okay yeah, yeah. But they call them they call them officers in the Salvation Army, so a bit of a different term. But yeah. yeah, so yeah, so but even with moving around, faith, you know, it hasn't hasn't changed from from where we've been. It's always been very much at home. So I've grown up. So there. how regularly have you moved around? Is there a certain amount of time that they kind of serve for then as ministers? Yeah, so it can be up to it's kind of three years minimum. Oh. Um yeah, and then I think it can go to like five, then seven. So they okay. they've had sort of seven years at somewhere and then they had five at another and then three at another so they've kind of moved around right. uh, you yeah. know different places which obviously I don't move with them now but no. <laughs> when we were younger <laughs> yeah I think the uh, I find the Salvation Army a bit fascinating I think um they are sort of the branch of the Christian church that is just so well known I think you know uh, speak to most people on the street and they know the Salvation Army the Salvation Army has um a presence about them I guess people recognize the uniform that Salvation yeah. Army people wear um, yeah and I think a really good reputation I think sometimes the church lets itself down and we only you know we know from stuff that we read in the media sometimes the church doesn't have a good reputation but I think the Salvation Army I think people would say you know they are known for reaching out to the lost and the broken and the vulnerable and in, in a sense it's what the church should be known for isn't it does yeah do, do you as salvationists do you kind of um do you feel that response do you feel that people are warm to you as a church because of uh, the reputation that kind of goes before you yeah and i think i think people know as well like because we're a church and um we you know we do those kind of things practically mm -hmm. um i think people kind of look out to that and i think more now than than ever people are looking to the church yeah. and I think um I think it's really important that you know we just help people in any in any way we can and I know I know in America they say just doing the most good for the Salvation yeah. Army and I think we've just right. got to try and do the most good in the situation yeah. that we're in and I yeah. think that you know that applies to to home as well and the everyday life like just stepping out your front door and giving yeah. someone a smile or holding that conversation especially at the moment with with those yeah. that may not have had a conversation with people and, and in the playground I really try to you know at a distance <laughs> chat to <laughs> chat to those parents that yeah. you know I know the part of Jonas class or you know in other classes just have that conversation and yeah. just so they might see something a little bit different that yeah. you know they yeah. learn to then trust and but yeah I definitely think the Savage Army say you know serve suffering humanity and I think that's definitely what we try to do to help people where where they need that help in yeah and in the everyday brilliant. life is really important i think yeah brilliant yeah. and how are you as a church um coping with uh, covid and restrictions and are you are you meeting at all how, where are you at at the moment with church and uh, no they're not they're not meeting um at the moment at, at, at church but they're doing um a lot of online things um and they have done throughout Okay. lockdown um and also again those practical things like you know going and getting a prescription for people i know the savage yeah. now we're booking hot meals for the elderly so they're getting right. meals regularly um but yeah just doing those again those practical things but also online things have been happening and different groups whereas perhaps people wouldn't have done that prior yeah. to lockdown whereas now they can access it at home and it's easy to access yeah. i guess yeah um so yeah so just kind of reaching out to people in different 
situations to, We've had to just, be really adaptable haven't we I, I yeah, think agile yeah. has been the buzzword it's about like yeah. okay yeah. this is how it is yeah. now and, and how do we, do we know, change yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, we're kind of having having conversations and who knows when it will change and when we'll be yeah. able to go back to something together but we're having conversations around um what we learn from this and what changes yeah. and what the way forward is uh, are you kind yeah. of having those similar conversations as well about what we might look yeah. like after this yeah i think like you say we don't know what's going to happen one week to the next but i think it's that whole um just like you say being open to to what might be next and really praying into it yeah. i think as humans in human nature i think we're very much this is how we want to do it this is what we want to do but actually we need to see what god wants and pray into yeah. actually god we're in a different place now what where yes. would you like us to go next but yeah. to listen to that as well and actually yeah. we're like okay we've got an opportunity there let's let's do something and be yeah. brave to do it yeah whereas absolutely. yeah so yeah. i think it's just a lot of trust and a lot of prayer <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah yeah i think it could be easy couldn't it to just like get our own ideas you're so right it's so important to listen to god and to trust him um and yeah that that's kind of speaks into who i know you are and uh, your trust in god and your strong faith um and I know uh, that in a sense, your faith has been really tested. We've spoken about Jonah, who's in year yeah. one. Um, yeah. But I know Olivia was born, um, was it seven years ago? Seven years ago. Yes, 2013. Yeah, seven years ago. Which is incredible. <laughs> um, I know. And I remember, I remember so clearly that day because she was your first baby and we were at yeah. work and... Um, I think, yeah, your due date had arrived and we were waiting to hear, yeah. and, you know, every day, like, have we heard anything from Heather? And <laughs> um, I remember very clearly being in the staff room and Sue, who was our head at the time, coming into the staff room and saying that Rob, your husband, had rung. And so we were like, ah. Yeah. And she told us the devastating news that Olivia had died. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the the numbness in that room and the disbelief and yeah just feeling incredibly shattered and that was that was us you know there yeah. what it was like for you yeah what what was it that had happened Heather? um so so basically i was in labor with olivia um and we were going through the stages as you do um we were at the hospital and just following what we had to do um and i was about to be given a drip uh, just to get more fluid into my body um and all of a sudden they they just lost olivia's heartbeat um so before you know it was midwives running in um a bed came in to come and get me kind of rob was sat there like what's going on um and then i'm rushed down to have an emergency c-section um and then um yeah i was just i was laying there sort of ready for the operation and they said to me we've got your baby's heartbeat back so you know that's that's great and um then i remember waking up in recovery and seeing the nurse next to me and sort of just the first thing i said was how's the baby but you know where's my baby and she just said to me i'll i'll just get your husband and from that moment i just knew that something wasn't right in there yeah and then rob came in and told me what happened and yeah just complete shock and desperation i guess at that point and yeah just a bit of a shocker but yeah that's and yeah <laughs> and even hearing that news at a distance and and yeah. not having the involvement that you were I, yeah. I can't imagine the the feelings and emotions that you were experiencing at that time and and the thought of life and and going future thinking it was going one way thinking you were beginning this life with your new baby and yeah. uh then just like that it all changing yeah. how how did you cope in those first few hours and that became days i guess yeah uh, um i don't know <laughs> to be honest i think <laughs> i think a lot of it was we just took an hour by hour you know this this is what's happening now this is what we've got to do in 20 minutes take it from there i'd i'd had a massive bleed and had an infection so i was in bed not being able to do anything um uh yeah and it was just a case of i think going through the motion i guess um yeah. and i remember desperately we just wanted to see her so okay. thankfully you know it was great and we were able to have her 
with us the whole time I was in hospital. So yeah. that to us was a real godsend and an answer's prayer. Um, mm. But yeah, I think it's just the people that God put in our path as well at that time really helped us. So the midwives okay. were incredible. Right. Um, obviously our family um, yeah. at the time, our friends and yeah, people from church. And I just think that's kind of how we managed those first few hours, I guess. It was just a case yeah. of, I don't quite believe this, but okay, this is what's happening. So I'm going to go with it. Yeah. And I guess the reality and the shock didn't perhaps kick in till a little bit later, mm. perhaps. Mm. And isn't yeah. it often in those really difficult, dark times that you, um, I don't know if it sometimes gives people a channel to express it, but it is those times where I think you feel the most loved and the most supported because people yeah. just want to yeah wrap you up and love you I think don't yeah. they yeah I absolutely you, um, you you did at that time and uh, I know you continue to you talk about Olivia a lot which yeah. is wonderful and yeah I remember oh sitting with tears running down my face as you showed me a beautiful album of pictures oh. of her and you'd, you'd had that time with her and I guess that that's quite different to how how this experience would have been in days gone by where um wasn't talked about and it was all a bit swept under the carpet for yeah. some people yeah. wasn't it which I think has yeah. been hard for people to recover from you yeah. know in a sense has that has that helped with the process that you were able to spend so much time with her yeah I think so because I can't imagine anything worse than thinking well I've had my baby but I can't hold her yeah like I just want to hold her. So yeah. the fact that I could have her and see her, you know, you could, because yeah. like you say, in days gone past, there would be no, you couldn't have a 3D scan, not that we did, but you couldn't have one and sort of see this picture of what yeah. your baby may look like, you know, yeah. to, yeah. but to be able to be able to see her and think, well, she, she has, you know, my eyes or she has, you know, she's got Rob's smile, something, not smile, yeah. but you know, Rob's features, something yeah. Yeah. that we can actually put a picture to who she was and yes not think not question that and not you know yeah to be able to have that physical contact was a real a real help I think yeah 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 and you've talked about your faith you've talked about your involvement in church um and something as devastating and as difficult as this I guess brings that to the fore and people would react differently I I think yeah. some people would would walk away and say you know that's not fair and why has that happened and people yeah. perhaps at times like to blame God and, or ask why he's allowed things to happen I mean yeah. how how did you how did faith play out in all of that for you did you did you find God to be more present or did you feel he was absent were you be angry I don't I don't know what was going on for you right then but for me, definitely, I felt closer to him than I have ever felt, probably. Um, especially through, as soon as it happened, I just felt his presence. He was just right there. It's wow. just like somebody to hold on to. And I know uh, Rob says as well, like in in a room of complete darkness, you know, where you just feel like there's no way out. There was just that glimmer of light, just that glimmer of there's, there's something there. And we just felt that, yeah, God was just even more present than he's ever been and yeah and he just had us if you know what I mean he just yeah. felt protected and, and loved at that time that's amazing that's wonderful yeah. and how did you kind of go forward from there how did you begin to pick up life uh, that didn't go the way that you'd wanted to it to you had you know you I know the room was ready and everything was ready and you hadn't got Olivia to take home how did you how did you pick up from that point yeah, again, I, again, I guess it was just literally taking it step by step and uh, and facing each hurdle as it came came yeah. to us, I guess. Um, so coming home and was was hard enough, like you say, coming into the house and that I didn't expect that to get me, but that was a real shocker for me when I got home. Um, yeah, and just trying to to cope with that and also physically recover. I think yeah. at the time I couldn't do anything. I couldn't. I had to, you know, sit down and just almost accept it in a way and just think, you know, I can't get up and about, I can't be doing this, I can't be doing that to try and make things better. I just 
fuck I just have got to accept this and mm. and again I think it's who God put in our path so mm. um the NHS offered us a counsellor and okay. so we went to um, midwifery counselling which we didn't know how to how to take when we got in there complete stranger you know doesn't yeah. doesn't know our situation but actually it was a real godsend for us and just to be able to chat to somebody that was detached from the situation yeah. um emotionally detached um yeah because i guess you were also dealing with other people's grief around you yeah. people that thought they were going to be grandparents and yeah other people absolutely. as well yeah. yeah and they were so good and you know they they were there for us the whole they still are you know the whole way through the journey and yeah. you know never once said well you know feel for me kind of thing but mm. to be able to talk to somebody that we weren't then feeling like we were putting more on to yeah yeah burden any more um yeah it was was just a real help for us and she she actually said to us that you won't completely move forward from this until you physically get another child okay. because you've got that you've got that physical holding again and that physical yeah, being able yeah. to do yeah. what you were supposed to do for the yeah. cradling and it's yeah. so true was it like, right yeah, so having so Jonah did something yeah. in the healing process yeah oh. definitely yeah just that whole well we can do this now what we were supposed to do you know we can hold him we can rock him to sleep we can just cuddle him yeah. and that helped again I think with the physical healing of yeah of what had happened yeah so yeah. he had twice <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> yeah. And I think just lastly, I think um we're not promised, are we, that life uh would be easy. Um right. and some people have such difficult things to deal with, which you have. But I do firmly believe that we are we are shaped and we are molded by our circumstances and our experiences. And so would you would you feel that would you think that because of what you've been through you've you've changed at all or it has grown you into something different yeah I mean I definitely I've learned not to take things for granted I, I mean I never did anyway but I've definitely learned to take it step by step and not yeah. rush ahead <laughs> and um yeah and and definitely learned to trust a whole lot more I think through that whole situation that's that's what we had to do we had to trust yeah. it there was hope for the future and yeah. um and I think yeah and there has been and and Jonah is amazing and I think that that's a real answer to prayer for us and I just yeah. think that through that it's just made me learn that actually you can rely on God and yeah and he is there for you no matter what and yeah yeah just gotta yeah. talk to him I think and <laughs> yeah. You, yeah I know that you've impacted so many people and I think even that taking things for granted i think because um coincidentally i know around the time that um olivia had died was my son's birthday um and it just brought it into such um clear vision really for me that 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 whole process with with my children had been like um easy but i had taken it for granted and uh, so yeah i think his birthday particularly that year i just held him a little bit closer and yeah. was yeah was truly grateful and and realized you know that I shouldn't take things for granted um and your your faith in all of this is just a huge testament to to who you are and to your relationship with God and uh, I know it speaks to to loads of people um yeah. I'm so I'm so grateful that you've shared your story with us today no, thank you so no, much no, Heather no, it's lovely to talk to you yeah and you Thank you for sharing. I appreciate your time and your honesty. And uh, yeah, it's just been brilliant. Thank you so no much. No see you, I'll see you at school soon. Yeah, yeah we will. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>